how many times did you apply before you were awarded? Yeah, I applied for twice. Uh, first time, I got a lot of good feedback. And then I decided to take enough time to revise it and really think about my research program. Um, so I reapplied two years later. Okay, so you took a break in between the mm -hmm. first two? Yes. Well, actually, the second proposal was very different. Okay. Um, in the first proposal, at that point, that was my second year. And then mm -hmm. I was still trying to figure out, you know, what will be my research program, you know, for coming, you know, five, six, seven years. And I think by the time that, you know, um, so when I submitted, you know, the first time, um, I wasn't really clear and then when I got the feedback I had a lot of good feedback in terms of what um, would be the priority for mm -hmm. NSF and I also got to talk with you know program officers I share my um, the feedback I got with my senior colleagues and I did a lot of you know mm -hmm. um, cons cons uh, consultations and then, um, so the second proposal was something that I was very sure that this is a topic that I will continue to work on for coming, you know, five, six years. It will be the foundational program mm -hmm. that I will definitely, you know, um, continue. At least a year ago, um, so I was, before I submitted my uh, proposals, I was serving as a co-PI uh, mm -hmm. on another NSF uh, funded project uh, led by my senior colleagues. And so I went to NSF uh, annual conferences. Mm -hmm. And so at that time I started to share my ideas. I have these ideas for NSF career. And so, so it was only it was not only just one meeting. There were multiple meetings mm -hmm. before I formally submitted my. So you proposal. really established a relationship with the, mm -hmm. with the, uh, the program officer before you submitted. Right, right. Okay. That really helped. Okay. Um, yeah. So I took a lot of uh, opportunities. Um, um, I attended every workshop or seminars or session that are offered by, by, by my university, but also at national conferences. Um, oftentimes, NSF has you know sessions on mm -hmm. you know how to get career award or other um, NSF fundings. So I attended those, um, and and then I also reviewed funded proposal. So that was really helpful, you know, within my discipline. And then just talking with my senior colleagues who have been successful getting NSF grants and getting feedback from them. Yeah, so uh, there are two directorates um, that are relevant to education fields, um, education and human resources and social behavior and economic sciences. So uh, within each uh, directorate, there are multiple divisions, mm -hmm. and so the um, career grants are funded under specific divisions under a directorate. So I needed to identify which one is the right one, and then you know I talked to senior colleagues, and then they were the one who you know could direct me which one. So the, the decision was really made by talking with senior colleagues, and then maybe the program officers. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that you know you don't know, you know, unless mm -hmm. you talk with someone who is familiar with NSF. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say definitely, you know, I was, when I started my position as assistant professor, I wanted to apply for an SS career um, grant, so I started really brainstorming, and I think I started writing probably at least, I don't know, seven, eight months ago. Prior to Yeah, to prior to, right, right, and then I got, you know, feedback on my rough draft and then also met with program officers in between and oh a lot yeah I you know I I thought that I have to take advantage of these you know great resources you know from 
uh, the senior expertise and you know colleagues that I, I had. So uh, these five or six. Okay, five or six yeah. outside mm -hmm. reviewers. Did you go outside your university at all, or was it all people within your department? Um, I asked feedback from my prior, uh, my former advisors, and then all the other professors. So yeah, from when I was a graduate student. Okay. Um, now you didn't get yours at FSU, is that correct? Right. Yeah, okay. I received it when I was at University of Missouri. Did they have a, a research development office there? Yes, they do. Did you use their services at all? Their oh, yeah, editing services? definitely. Yeah, yeah. So the College of Education, just like FSU, have a grant writer, and mm -hmm. then they have a budget administrators, and so yeah, their help help was very you know useful um, in making sure that you know if I'm communicating these technical you know concepts or uh, terminologies in a way that that can be understood by any you know reviewers in various disciplinary areas. Um, so for my career um, grants, I, uh, there are three goals. The first, to understand um, the work context. So that includes policies and uh, districts and school organizations. That those con conditions that support teachers to engage in continuous learning opportunities. And then second, uh, impact of those teachers' engagement in professional development opportunities on uh, growth in student learnings in mathematics. And then the third part is the education component. So that's unique about NSF uh, grant that, you know, so I propose to do various educational activities um, in addition to, you know, common things like um, integrating the project findings into my graduate courses and disseminating findings at national conferences a report, um, you know, I propose to um, offer workshops for the local districts and school leaders, mm. um, how to support their teachers to engage in professional development opportunities. Um, and yeah, and then also I develop specific report for each district uh, where I collected the data from. Um, so I created those district tailored um, data on how their teachers' professional development activity looks like in comparison to the state average or comparison to other districts, um, and then um, including a recommendation how they may consider changing the structures or support uh, for teachers' professional development in mathematics. Your um, those are well above and beyond. Okay. You know, I think that's that's what's really helpful about career grants that you know really pushes you to become you know what the NSF calls teacher scholar. Uh, you're not only a scholar who produce publication, but we, you have to um, contribute to the improvement of education based on your research. So that integrations between educational activities and research is such an important component. And I think that really helped me also as, um, as a faculty member. Um, well, I think in various way, uh, first publications, um, and also you know, various conference papers, um, also, part of the career program's expectation is a mentorship of graduate students. So I had two graduate students who used my project data to write their dissertations and you know, successfully defend it. So those are the kind of outcome um, of the research. For education, I gathered feedback from the participants of my workshops and you know, also asked for you know, their input or feedback from the report that I produce for you know each district. So those are the kind of data I gather to evaluate. So did you do that all yourself or did you have any outside consultants help you? I did it by myself, yeah. And good thing about Korea is it's a five year project. So mm -hmm. it's not something you need to do it in a year. It's uh, in over the years and then you don't need to do it every year. It's you know toward the end of the you know the project maybe fourth year, fifth year, and by that time you have a lot of 
data, you know, and then you will work on those things, you know, little by little. So I, I didn't feel like it was uh, too much of work. Yeah, um, so I think it, any project has you know, a certain level of risk. For example, in my case, m I propose to gather data from about 1,000 mathematics teachers in middle schools and you know, from the state of Missouri. And because the state of Missouri is a small state, there are about only 1,000 teachers. And of course, you know, not all teachers participated in the survey. So my, um, the survey data you know, I gathered um, every year and longitudinally and then try to link that with a student achievement growth over time. So for both survey and student achievement data, the data are not complete. They are, you know, eventually, you know, over three years, uh, because there are, there are teachers who come into the district as a new teacher, a teacher leaving, retiring. So there's no consistent number of teachers who could participate over the years. Um, so the total number, it, it turned out to be about 600. So it's a lot less than, you know, 1,000 that I expected. Um, and so, but that's the kind of thing that, you know, you can also predict, you know, as a risk, and then you can be prepared, you know, to how to address it. Yeah, um, so, my first experience with grant writing is um, for dissertation grants when I was a graduate student. And when I did that, you know, I, I was working as a research assistant for my advisors who had uh, NSF funding. Um, so I knew about NSF as a major, you know, uh, funding organizations um, that you know, I can definitely pursue. Um, and so, yeah, as a, when I got a faculty position, that was first thing that I thought, yeah, eventually I'd like to get that grant. But then I didn't go for that right away because that's a huge, you know, five-year grant with a large amount. So I started out with submitting my um, proposal ideas um, for internal grants. And there are multiple small grants, just like FSU. Um, and I was successful in getting those small grants. And then that allowed me to get, um, a, have some preliminary findings that I could include into my career proposal. So that was a way that I could show that, okay, I, you know, I'm capable of doing this, you know, uh, five year long term uh, grants. And here are the promising findings, you know, from this earlier internal, you know, funded project. Yeah, it helped me a lot in various ways. I think first, once you have um, a career award, you will be part of this annual NSF um, conferences. And that's where all the other you know, um, funding recipients, so not only career award, but other you know, larger grant scale grants, um, you know, Project and so you will get to see so many successful uh, faculty members uh, in various disciplinary area, not only in within my area, but you know. Um, so I will I was able to get connected with all these experts and then also learn about you know NSF funding priorities. So think about okay after career, then what will be the next phase of my um, project. And yeah, and then also I think that integration of research and education, is w which is really unique to Korea, um, and then this long-term five-year funding allow me to really think about my research program without worrying about you know submitting proposal year after year, uh, and really focusing on the, what kind of researcher do I want to be, and how do I want to contribute uh, to the education communities uh, based on my research. Yeah, um, submit 
a proposal, definitely. Um, and don't, don't be discouraged by rejections. Um, you can submit up to three times. There aren't many people who will get it the first time. Most majority of people get turned down. And, but you will get a lot of you know, great feedback. Um, and so, yeah, just go for it. The, my uh, project used mixed methods, so I used survey methods, I used case studies which involve interviews, um, and for survey, you know, I had, I had expertise, I teach survey methods, so I, there is a certain procedures that I made sure the reliability and validity of the survey instruments, um, and so I knew that, you know, when I implemented the survey, the finding will be reliable. Uh, for interviews, you need to make sure that you know, the quality of the questions are good uh, and you have a good rapport and trust with the interviewees and gather the reliable information. Yeah, well, definitely get all the help you get you know you can get um, and don't get discouraged with rejections and um, and there are just so much resources and support from FSU that you can benefit from um, so many career awardees uh, so many successful senior colleagues um, that you can learn from and they will be really helpful to you okay, okay so um you're, you're in a social sciences field, and that's not as commonly funded as some of the hard sciences. Can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges and opportunities that exist for uh, social sciences researchers in NSF mm -hmm. career? Yes, um, well definitely if you look around, you know, um, you may not see a many of your colleagues getting a career award in social science field. And, uh, but, you know, there are so many colleagues that who have received regular NSF grants in social science fields, uh, in math education, science education, even economics or in anthropology. So definitely there are a lot of ways to learn how to develop a strong career proposal in social science fields. Thank you so much, Dr. Akiba, for coming out and participating in our NSF career interview series. You're welcome. Thanks. Good.